What's up, Grandmaster Igor Smirnov is here, and today I'd like to share with you the most effective opening trap for Blitz in 2022. This here. I'm gonna prove it that it's not a clickbait, it does work. Let's go to the chessboard and see it ourselves. After you play e4, black responds with pawn e5, you can transition into the Danish Gambit after offering this one pawn sacrifice followed by pawn to c3. Here, black usually captures this pawn and you go with bishop to c4, seeking quick development and potentially a quick attack. After black accepts the other pawn sacrifice and bishop takes b2, at this point when black is uh, unaware of this gambit, they usually respond with bishop b4 check, just because it's natural to develop a piece as well as to deliver this check. And then instead of playing a more mainstream of knight to c3, you may go knight to d2, which makes a lot of sense as well, it keeps this open diagonal for the bishop, therefore you're threatening to actually capture this pawn on g7, and in order to stop this, black will, would play knight to f6. It develops the knight, it also creates the threat of knight takes e4, notice that this knight is pinned, therefore it cannot recapture, and therefore knight takes e4 looks like a strong threat for black. But you ignore this, and you simply play knight to f3. You keep playing in this gambit style, giving up some material to finish your development as quick as possible and rush into the attack. Now, here at this point, black would either capture this pawn or castle. We're gonna analyze both of these moves. And let's start with knight takes e4, the most aggressive way to handle it for black. Then you castle. Now your knight is unpinned, and therefore it's ready to capture the knight, and therefore black will probably decide to trade knights. Since they're already so much ahead in material, it's good for them to trade pieces. But now, instead of recapturing with your own knight, you're playing a very crucial intermediate check rook to e1. And this move can easily get your opponent off guard, because they were hoping that you're gonna recapture, but instead you transition into the attack. If black doesn't want to lose their right at castle, they're gonna cover their king with the bishop, and then queen takes d2, and if you look at this, it's a pretty beautiful position, because you can see that you are fully mobilized, while black, for the most part, is still completely stuck in their development. Anyway, Right now you're also still threatened to capture that pawn on the king side, therefore black will probably castle. And now there is a beginning of a very beautiful attack which black cannot handle, and it's also a very sudden attack, because calculating the following lines is not an easy task, even for an advanced player, if they are not prepared. But you will be after this video, so stay tuned. Rook takes e7 here. You eliminate the final developed piece of the black's position. And now after queen takes e7 and then rook to e1, bringing your last piece into the attack, we have this ideal situation when all of your pieces are completely active and all of the black's pieces are completely passive. And this sets it for a quick attack. So right now you're hitting the queen, it has to move somewhere, and Wherever it goes, it doesn't really help. Let's say it goes queen c5, the most played move in the position. Then you've got a very simple follow-up, queen c3, and all of a sudden there is nothing black can do against a very simple queen takes g zone threat. Game over. All right, let's take a move back here. What if they go queen to d8? It's still, of course, very passive. And then you just play knight to g5, getting one more piece involved into your attack, so that it looks at these two critical squares, and after black does something, let's say knight to c6, you are ready to break through the black's defense with knight takes f7, rook takes, and then you can continue with queen to d5, you taking advantage of this pin and threatening to simply capture the rook on the next move, which will also checkmate the black's king very soon after that. The only way to protect the rook is playing queen to f8, and um, in this position, let me ask you to think about this. And write it down in the comments below if you can find the right move for white here. It is definitely winning, but you gotta find the way to do that. And now let's move on to the next line that can also happen in your games. And before we go into the second line, let me just real quick share with you why this opening trap is so effective. Here we go to the game database. You can see here in the right corner the number of games played with different moves as well as the success rate. Here after e4, e5, the move that which is on the top is the move which is most played. And here you can see the number of games, let's say here around 70 million times black played pawn e5. And now if you surprise them with this Danish Gambit, pawn takes, pawn c3, as you can see we keep going over the top line which means the most played line. Pawn takes, you go bishop c4, by four the most played move is pawn takes, b2, bishop takes, again bishop take 
to b4 is the most played move here bishop b4 instead of knight c3 we go knight to d2 getting black a little bit off their knowledge now knight to f6 and here instead of all those moves we go knight to f3 and now the two main moves are either a castling or knight takes e4 which we just analyzed and knight takes e4 leads to this completely winning attack for you after you castle and the other option for black we're going to analyze so this just goes to show that this is truly a deadly opening trap which most of your opponents are unfamiliar with it's not like one of those opening traps that were around for 100 years and most of the strong players know this this is something that majority of players are completely unaware of in this position we have just analyzed that playing the most tempting move knight takes e4 in fact is a bad mistake for black it's a losing mistake if black plays it they're already lost even though of course it's certainly not easy to figure it out unless you are prepared such as you'll be prepared after watching this video instead of knight takes e4 blacks get a castle that's certainly a lot better option which is much safer for black and in this case you would also have to castle and play more or less normally now after white castled they're threatening pawn e5, which is quite annoying to black, because that would kick this knight away. Therefore, black is likely to play pawn d6. And in this position, instead of things that players usually play here, I recommend a move knight to b3, which is a tricky way once again. Well, all of these lines are quite tricky. The, the idea here is that black usually will overlook the main point of this move. According to the database, they usually go bishop g4, which is actually a mistake. They indeed overlook your idea. And the point here is that you can play a3. You don't have to, but you have this threat and you can execute it any moment you want. And now we can realize why it was so critical for white to have this knight on b3. It controls the possible retreat squares for the bishop. And therefore, the only square for the bishop right now is bishop c5. And now you can trade it, doubling black's pawns. And after that, if you play queen b3, you can see that even though black is having an extra material, a couple extra pawns, but you've got a pretty good compensation here. You have a lot of threats. The queen is hitting this pawn on b7. Your pawn from e4 is ready to go forward and attack the knight. One of your rooks can go here and attack black's queen over there on the d8 square. Your knight from f3 can go e5 and add fuel into the fire. All in all, you see that you have a very active position and certainly it's not easy for black to handle it. Now, being completely objective, of course, overall these lines should be in the black's favor. If they're able to calculate variations precisely, find proper defensive moves, they're gonna end up with an extra material. That's why I said that it's the best opening trap for blitz, because in blitz, I think practically it's very difficult for black to handle it again unless they analyzed it beforehand which most of your opponents certainly won't. Now having said that you are free to play this variation and I understand that sometimes your opponent will surprise you with some move which we didn't discuss in this video and you may wonder what should you do in that case. In this case I would recommend that you actually watch my free masterclass where I break it down in general terms the right algorithm of thinking for you. How to play in an opening what is the main plan for the middle game and we go through it together so that you can see how to react when you are going into the position when you don't know the theory but you still need to find proper moves so i do recommend that you click the link on the screen and check this out also consider subscribing if you haven't already because there is a lot more value coming your way wishing you beautiful chess games have a great rest of the day ciao